welcome to the first of my Sunday homily series. During these strange times of suspended church services, I hope that a short weekly homily and some simple prayers will encourage you and in some small way help to nourish you until we can all gather around the Lord's table again. During this time of suspended church services, I have a few suggestions. I intend to make a homily like this based on the Gospel for the Week, available every Friday. We'll come with a reading and a few simple prayers. It might be that you watch this on Sunday morning and then tune in to Songs of Praise so you can have a good old sing as well. You might observe the season of Lent, Holy Week and Easter, at home with some of the old disciplines, like fish on Fridays, palm decorations at your door for Palm Sunday, a towel and a jug of water somewhere prominent in your house on Monday Thursday, a simple plain cross on the front lawn on Good Friday, and perhaps some flowers to adorn it on Easter morning. Often such simple devotional practices can be comforting as tangible expressions that God's presence is not missing just because we're unable to worship together at this time. These are also simple ways of keeping the rumour of God alive in our wider community during these COVID-19 weeks. Many of the clergy are live streaming morning or evening prayer or simple said masses. There are so many services online that you can find anything from grand choral services to simple meditative moments. I hope that this short offering from your bishop will be useful for you. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 11 starting at verse 38. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they might believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in the cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story of the raising of Lazarus has always resonated with me. I suspect it's because that as a boy, I was intrigued that Lazarus's tomb would stink because he'd been dead for several days. Such visceral details are often glossed out of the sacred scriptures. In this wonderful icon, you can see some of those standing around holding their cloaks to their noses to minimize the smell. The group of scribes and Pharisees seem to be having double trouble with the bad smell. There's also the inappropriateness of what Jesus is doing. The odour is doubly unpleasant, but also they can't stay away. They don't want to miss out the excitement of seeing what the rabbi is going to do. The scholars tell us that this is the last of the seven great signs in John's Gospel. Miracles that point us towards a new and deeper understanding of who Jesus really is. Starting with the joy of the wedding at Cana in Galilee, where the first of the seven signs is turning water into wine, the signs progressively reveal that Jesus is not just a wonder worker or a great rabbi, 
but that he is intimately connected with the Father. In this, the seventh sign, Jesus calls his dear friend Lazarus from the dead to restored life. Here is a prefiguring of what happens to Jesus when God raises him from death to new life. Do you notice what happens in the icon? All that is rocky and bare and lifeless in the setting of Lazarus's tomb is suffused with gold as Jesus' true character, his divine nature is uncovered. Into the darkness of tears, sorrow and death, Jesus speaks the word of life. Lazarus, come out, and everything changes to gold. It's not hard to see some resonances with our own experience at this time of COVID-19. Although the threat of death may not be imminent, there is an enormous amount of anxiety in our community at present. The collapse of our economy, the ruthless ending of jobs, social isolation, the real disparity between wealthy and poor people in the face of the coronavirus, and the plain reality that our comfortable lives have been squeezed harder than at any time since the world wars, make us not so dissimilar from Martha and Mary and their friends whose world has collapsed around them. Into this context too, our context, Jesus speaks to us, inviting us to see more than the darkness in which we're currently fumbling around. Those of us who are followers of Jesus cling to this reality. There is always more ahead than we can see or understand. Jesus calls to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. He calls to us too, to move into a new and different and perhaps even more wonderful future. Would you join me now as we say together the modern form of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let me pray to the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. We pray that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his presence abiding in us he may raise us to joys eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve and keep you and us all now and forever. Amen.